Hello everyone. Welcome to BISPSolutions.com. My name is Somit and I'm VP CRM Solutions with BISP. In this video, we will be going to see that how can we set up Salesforce REST API integration by using Java. I used to get couple of requirements from our clients that they would like to integrate their Salesforce with Java by using REST API integration. So I have configured same for my clients and also I decided that I should share the same model, same learning with all of you as well. Therefore, by using this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to configure that. To set up REST API integration using Java, you will need the couple of things which you need to configure. First of all, you need to have a Salesforce Enterprise Edition or above, or maybe you can have a Salesforce Developer Edition. You need to have a Java for that and an Eclipse IDE interface. So he will be using Eclipse, Java Eclipse for integration purpose. So as you can see, I have already registered into Salesforce and that's my account which I would be using. So this I have already done, done. This is our first requirement. Second requirement is for Eclipse. So my Eclipse is also ready. My Eclipse is also ready. So you can see the Eclipse is here. So I have already installed Eclipse on my desktop on my machine. So before we actually start setting up the rest environment in Java, we need to have we need to configure a couple of things. So the first thing is we would be requiring the Apache HTTP client. So this is the URL to download HTTP client HTTPS sc.apache.org slash downloads dot CGI and from this link you can you need to download the most updated version so I will download 4.5.3 tar.zz and uh, I will download and store within a folder so I've already downloaded it and stored within a folder named as rest API in this rest API that's the HTTP component client 4.5.3 and I have successfully unzipped it so this after unzipped it will create a folder and in this folder we will have a set of libraries which we are going to use in our Eclipse. This is the first requirement. Second requirement is we need to download and we need to download the JSON framework and for download JSON framework we will be using this link mvnrepository.com slash artifacts slash org dot json slash json and from here I will download the most updated version that is 2017.5.16. So this also I have already downloaded and stored as a JSON 2017-2015. This is an executable ZAR file. So I'm not going to unzip it. I will be, I will be including uh, directly this into my Eclipse. The third requirement is we need to create one connected app. And uh, connected app basically once we create a connected app we would be getting the will be using the OAuth, and uh, we will be using the will be getting client ID and client secret to know more about connected app and how to create connected app you can visit my previous video in which I have demonstrated that how can we create connected apps for integration purpose so let me show you my connected app so my connected app is here so this is my connected apps within apps and the name of my connected app is test rest api and uh, we would be requiring two important things first of all the consumer key and the consumer secret so this is my consumer key and that's my consumer secret so that's my consumer key so i just copy paste this consumer key and save it just make sure that if you reset your token or if you reset your password you need to re fresh your consumer key and consumer secret so that's my consumer key and that's my consumer key and that's my consumer secret so 
so after we successfully extracted consumer key and consumer secret now it's time to set up the rest environment in java and for doing this we'll be using eclipse so i have already installed eclipse on my desktop environment so i just launch this eclipse okay So make sure that here you will be getting Java. It means we would be creating a Java project. So the very first thing is we will be going to create a new Java project. So I click on File, New, Java Project. And in this video, we will be going to see that how can we successfully build a connection between Salesforce with the help of Java environment by using REST API. In my upcoming video, we'll be going to see that how can we perform DML operations. So I'll use the default location. I'll go with the use default GRE currently. And it is it is necessary that you, you, you should have a Java installed on a system. And uh, so make sure that you select the correct version of Java and click on. We need to provide the project name. So I provide project name Salesforce REST. API and click on finish. So the project is ready. Now the next step we are going to do is we need to add the libraries. The we need to add the libraries for HTTP components and for JSON. We need to refer this. So I right click on the project properties. Click on project. Uh, sorry click on Java build path and in Java build path I choose libraries in libraries click on add external ZAR files so the first ZAR file from HTTP component lib and the files which we will be requiring the files are the files which we require to add so I'll select HTTP core HTTP client 4.5.3 and common login and common codec. Click on open. One more time we click on add external ZAR file and this time uh, we would be referring it to JSON. So JSON ZAR file. Click on OK. Next we need to create a Java code. So for doing that I expand this SRC and I create a new folder. So first I create a new folder and the name of that folder will be I'll just give this name as Salesforce underscore rest. So I give this name as Salesforce underscore rest. That's the name of the folder. Click on finish. Right click on folder new and then we are going to create new Java class and the name of that Java class is I'll give name as main. It's a public type and I'll go with the default options. Click on finish. So you see the, uh, the main cl class is ready. Now we are going to write the code to build a connectivity between to integrate Salesforce with by using Java. And for doing that, I have already I already have a pre-existing code, so I'll just use that code. So first, I include couple of libraries, and these are the libraries I will be using: Java.io.exception, HTTP client, HTTP post, HTTP client, client builder, response, status, JSON object, JSON tokener, and JSON exception for exception handling. And in main function, in main function, that's the code. So in this code. The first thing is we create couple of variables like username, password, login URL, grant service, client ID and client secret. That's my username. That's my password. And all of you know that because we are trying to access the Salesforce data out of Salesforce. So security token is required. So the password is along with security token. So we have proper 
my password is my password plus security token. That's the login URL. Grant service client ID. That's the client ID which we copied. So I just copied this client ID again. paste my client ID we can go and we can just go and verify again whether client ID is correct or not so that's the client ID and uh, I just copy the client ID here I just copy the client ID and my client secret so it's 7199 and it's 49 fine then we have a main function public static void main function in this we define HTTP client builder dot create dot build and we create a new variable as login URL. It's a it's of a string type and in this string we just come we just concatenate all the variables we created login URL with grant service client ID client secret username and password this we have already configured in our uh, in my previous in our previous video so in my previous video we have already defined this directly we directly pass this URL in uh, Google Chrome REST API tool. So this is just to print, just to figure it out whether the URL is correct or not. Then we said HTTP post and HTTP response. And uh, here, this particular code, this particular code will verify whether it is successfully logged in or not. So if if it is successfully logged in, it will display a message that is successfully logged in. What will be the instant URL and uh, what's the access token and session ID and it will display the login access token. First of all, I just save all my all my work and right click on main Java and run as Java application. So I right click on main dot Java run as Java application will get this save and launch so from here select main.java okay and once the process is completed once the process is finished we'll see one confirmation message it says successful login instance url is this and that's the access token id so this is how we can successfully connect salesforce with java by using rest api so this is the first part of our task. This is the first video in the series. In next, in next video, in next uh, upcoming video, I will be going to demonstrate you. I will be going to tell you that how can we perform DML operations from Eclipse by using REST API. So that's all in this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Don't or press like. If you have any comments, you can post your comments. If you have any requirements for training as well as for consulting services, feel free to connect us. We would be happy to serve you. Keep watching. Have a nice day.